It's been three years since Kong and Godzilla tag-teamed to take down Mechagodzilla, and they've settled into their respective routines. Kong's now the king of Hollow Earth, a realm so secretive it makes Area 51 look like Disneyland. But while Kong's busy playing King of the Underground, Godzilla's on the surface, making sure the other titans remember who's boss, starting with Titanus Scylla in Rome, because apparently the Colosseum needed another historic battle. Everything's chill, well, as chill as it can be in a world where giant monsters exist, until a mysterious signal from Hollow Earth gives everyone a cosmic headache. Gia, the last Iwi survivor, starts having some serious Stranger Things vibes with hallucinations and visions. Godzilla, sensing a disturbance in the force, decides to power up by attacking a nuclear plant in France, because why not throw in a quick European vacation before the apocalypse? Meanwhile, Kong stumbles upon a sinkhole in Hollow Earth, because that's not terrifying at all, and discovers a hidden tribe of his species, including a juvenile named Suko. This would be heartwarming if it wasn't also the setup for some serious family drama. Enter Scar King, the tyrannical leader of this ape tribe, who's got his own pet Teton, Shimo, a giant ice-powered monster who's basically Elsa if she were a kaiju. In a showdown that's one part Planet of the Apes and one part Frozen, Scar King and Shimo give Kong a frosty reception, leaving him with a bad case of frostbite and without his trusty axe. But don't worry, because this is Kong we're talking about. He manages to escape because the movie isn't called Scar King x Shimo. Back on the human side of things, Dr. Eileen Andrews, Gia, and the gang, featuring Titan Vet Trapper and conspiracy podcaster Bernie Hayes, because every kaiju movie needs that one guy who thinks they know everything, head to Hollow Earth to investigate the signal. They discover a surviving Iwi tribe who communicate telepathically, which is both cool and a little creepy. Andrews starts worrying that Gia might want to stay with her people, setting the stage for some emotional tension that will definitely pay off later. In a twist worthy of Indiana Jones, Andrews uncovers a prophecy. Scar King once tried to conquer the surface world, fought Godzilla's ancestors, and nearly caused an ice age with Shimo. The prophecy also reveals that Gia is key to awakening Mothra. And guess what? Mothra does make a grand re-entrance, just in time for the final showdown. This isn't just any moth, this is the Beyonce of Kaiju, ready to save the world once again. With the stakes higher than ever, Kong surfaces in Cairo and calls out to Godzilla, hoping to team up. But Godzilla, being the moody loner he is, misunderstands and throws the first punch. Their brawl is interrupted by Mothra, who finally gets them to chill out and head back to Hollow Earth to face the real threat. The final showdown spills onto the surface, specifically in Rio de Janeiro, because what's an epic kaiju battle without some beach vibes? Scar King and Shimo trigger a second Ice Age, but Suko arrives just in time with Kong's axe, taking down Scar King and smashing the crystal controlling Shimo. Godzilla and Mothra undo the Ice Age with a little atomic breath and some moth magic, and the day is saved. With the world safe again, Godzilla returns to his Colosseum Airbnb for some much-needed R&R. Gia decides to stay with Andrews, Mothra restores Hollow Earth's protective barrier, and Kong, now the undisputed leader of his tribe, heads back home with Suko and Shimo. The world may never be the same, but at least the Titans know who's really in charge. Thank <laughs> you.